Hello everypony! I'm Jaffa Archfiend and these are my thoughts on the Season 4 two-parter opening of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic Princess Twilight Sparkles Part 1 and 2. Sweet Luna, that is a mouthful. <laughs> Sorry this is a bit late, um, outside influences and all that. But from now on I shall endeavour to have a review of each episode up by the Tuesday after the show is aired. Since I'm in Britain, I'm dependent on YouTube for the episodes. I work weekends and I kind of go to three, I kind of go to college three days a week. Blah 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 blah. But enough about that. The opening episode. Let's get down to it. I was originally going to go over the episode as a whole. Well, two episodes. You know what I mean. But you've got the likes of Tommy Oliver, Digi Brony, Kimmy Sparkle. And the list goes on and on and on for that. And well, they've already covered most of it. And Got me thinking, what did they all miss? What intrigued me when I was watching this episode? As we see in the beginning, Twilight still holds doubts about her new role as a princess of Equestria. Understandable, since I think, bear with me here, it's only been one year since this whole thing started. Why am I saying it's been a year? Well, got Celestia to blame for that one. She goes on and on throughout this episode about how the summer sun used to mark the day she banished Nightmare Moon, when she banished her sister using the power of the elements, a thousand years ago, but how now it's a celebration of her return as Luna. The way in the episode that she says the word now, it kind of implies that this is the first summer sun celebration since Luna came back. And assuming that the summer sun celebration is a yearly event... Yeah, assuming this is all true, all of season 1, 2, and 3 happened in the space of a single year. Of course, wibbly wobbly, timey wimey, this may have only been the first, this may only be the one that we actually see on screen. Um, the rest of them could have been happening off screen for all we know, I don't know. We're assuming Hasbro knows. Woo for banjacking our shared head, head cannon there. Now, Something that a lot of the reviewers, this is what I'm actually going into now, didn't actually go into that much depth on the whole Twilight Sparkle Dark Magic bit. Tommy Oliver did do a quick statement on his, on this subject after his co-op with Digibrony, but it didn't go into that much depth, I don't think. Allow me to, however. What we know of the Dark Magic from Season 3's opener is that it draws power from anger, hatred, fear, all that good evil stuff you find so often when it comes to Dark Magic in any universe, whether it be fantasy or sci-fi. And as the show has hammered in now and then, and now and again and again and again, is that Twy has a bit of a confidence issue at times, which can lead to paranoia, self-doubt, and the occasional bouts of magical-induced hysteria. Yes, I'm looking at you, Lesson Zero. Uh, pile that on top of her new sudden status as an alicorn princess, assuming this has all happened in the space of a year. Generally speaking, as well, just the whole suddenly becoming a princess thing. And the rug pulled out from under her of not being Celestia's student anymore. Something that she's been for most of her life, as far as we can tell. So, suddenly a princess, no longer having that rock that used to be the foundation of her life of being Celestia's prized student. Piled on top of the Everfree Forest is attacking, both Princess Luna and Celestia are missing, the sky is in a permanent twilight, which I found to be quite nice, and now she's being told that the only way she can find where they are is to use Alicorn magic to activate the MacGuffin potion to find them. Yeah, I'm going to call it a MacGuffin Potion because that did kind of come out of nowhere. It's like, I think they only had Zakora there just to... How did she have that prepared already? Does she just carry around these potions everywhere she goes? It's like a case of like, oh, what if we need this? Yeah, very bad Zakora impersonation there. Get over it. Um, but is it any wonder why she would feel immense doubt and fear under that much pressure? As we kind of saw when it was a case of like trying to find time to see her Ponyville friends when it came to her list, she quite literally climbed the route. She quite literally flew up the wall in her little dementia. This dark magic aspect leaves quite open in the future, though, for future possibilities. Especially if the um, uh, fan fictions ran around. They seem to hold a little bit more possibility now. <laughs> Will Twy use the dark magic each time that something calls for alicorn magic? 
Will she slowly grow accustomed to calling on such foul powers? Will we see a nightmare twilight in a future episode? All these questions are raised by this one single moment in the episode, more than anything else. That, in fact, we no longer have the Elements of Harmony canon running around with us. So that's going to be interesting, seeing how we handle not having that as our pull, out, uh, pull our asses out of the fire weapon. Uh, one other thing I did like about this episode, the things, one thing I will comment that I really liked is the cyclical effect of this. The whole season of My Little Pony started with the Summer of Sun celebration, which then brought everyone together, as Applejack in the episode does state. And the fact that we're now with season four, looking at these characters in a new light with Twilight as an Elicorn and their new responsibilities and their new dynamic of having to now come to terms with that. And it's all beginning with the Summer Sun celebration. Hmm, quite nice. I will admit, I did kind of hope the uh, Nightmare Moon battle would be a little bit longer, to be honest. I mean, it's a battle between gods. Seriously, you'd expect something that epic to be a lot, lot longer. I really wish that they'd pushed into this into three episodes so we could have a much more epic clash of the powerful titans. But, well, mm, pacing. You never know. Maybe we'll get more into in depth on that later. I don't know. It might have just been a fast-forward version of the vision that Twilight saw. I don't know. There are two last things I'd like you all to think about, and... Put, put in the comments below and all that, if you want, before I sign off of this. The Tree of Harmony. How exactly did Luna and Celestia discover or hear about this almighty powerful plant that would save them from Discord? I mean, it wasn't in the Elements book that Pinky found under E. It, no pony, Twilight Sparkle herself, who has probably read the entire Canterlot library at least twice by now, I'm thinking has never even heard of it, and she's pretty much got an eidetic memory when it comes to stuff like that. Uh, no, even Celeste, even, no one seemed to know what it was. Even Discord didn't quite know what was going on. Although that might have just been him messing up with our heads. Uh, that's the first point. The second point I'd like to raise is why were they bruised and battered when they discovered it? That could, of course, be explained by the whole living in Discord world, but somehow I don't quite think so. I think there was something else going on around that time period, because we still have the whole Sombra thing to go into. Because the Vision seemed to skip that. It kind of seemed to kind of like skip between the whole time of the Elements of Harmony kicking Discord's ass, and then the Elements of Harmony kicking Nightmare Moon's ass. I don't know. That could all just be speculation. But that is my review and thought. Well, not quite review. Those are my thoughts on the season opener. And I'm looking forward to seeing what comes up next in the rest of the season. And also, what's in the box? Come on! Probably won't know until the end of the season, but come on! What's in the box? I've got one idea, but I'm not entirely certain because we don't get the TCG over here that much. The element of love? I don't know. Is that an actual thing in the TCG or is it just someone messing with my head? I don't know. This is Jeff Archfiend, signing out.